I just finished uh, college and uh, I liked playing music and I was I was doing both. I started doing an MSc and playing in the band and the band took off so I went with it, you know, and, and uh, at least they guaranteed to pay us 20 quid a week so it seemed <laughs> worth having a go. And, and then suddenly it sort of seems to snowball and it takes over your life and uh, it's carried on ever since. In the early days uh, I was very quiet because I was I, I felt I was like the the new boy in the band because they'd, they'd only been going for six months but they had a few different bass players and so I joined and I used to keep very out of it really in a way I, and the three of them used to argue like mad all the time and I just used to you know and I said come on Joe why don't you join in I said oh, you know I just didn't want to get involved really with arguments. And then Fred would find it quite funny and amusing and, and he'd actually sort of help settle it and calm the atmosphere by making you know making fun of it really you know in the silly little things. When I did start with the band. They, uh, Freddie and Brian used to be the main songwriters. Uh, they used to write individually though, most of the time, and then Roger wrote one, really. Um, I think he wrote one on the first album. So Brian and Freddie were the, were the strong force on the compositional side, you know, but Roger was very, had lots of other ideas on behalf of the, um, the overall image of the band and, and, and how to actually, you know, to be a successful rock band, you know. So, um, to, I mean, I, we, we, there was not really a leader in such because the, no one was really actually stating everything that was, could be done. And then as the years went on, we all started to contribute, you know, on the, on the songwriting side, which helped a lot to sort of balance it out a bit. You know, there was a, a different input as well. Because, I mean, obviously, everybody goes through stale patches where, they, you know, you can't come up with much in the way of ideas. And then if, if there's four of you writing, then there's usually there's some strength there somewhere, which helps. Our first American tour, we had a station wagon, and, and we all got into it, and, and uh, commercial flights here and there, and, uh, you know, sharing rooms and holiday inns. We just didn't know what to expect when we got to the airport. It was mayhem, really, and uh, it was quite an experience, in a way, to, to, to feel the mania from the fans, and they're just screaming. You know, they're all hanging out in the hotels, hiding behind curtains in the corridors, and uh, everywhere we went, we got followed. First time we played in the, the Budokan Hall in Tokyo. I mean, the noise was just enormous, because they sell all the, the, the seats behind you as well. And when we walked on, it was all screaming and throwing presents on the stage. and. It was a very strange song to record in a way because we actually did it in sections. I mean, it was uh, um, Freddie's idea, I think, you know. And we, I remember doing one recording session in Rockfield where we were just, Freddie was saying, right, these are the notes, and it goes dum, 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 and, and it seemed to have no connection with anything. But he had all the ideas of what he wanted to go on top. I started it off in England, actually. We had some time off and. Um... I'd always wanted to do something a little bit more that was more sort of disco -y, which was very uncool at the time, you know, it wasn't the sort of thing, you know. Uh, but l luckily, in a way, it came out quite heavily. But I started it off with actually a completely different set of lyrics. It was all about cowboys, which is why the, the American phrase, everyone bites the dust, came in, really. But then I thought that was very silly. I, I, never, I never even got to show that to the band, but I decided to change it before then. So I, you know, changed the lyrics altogether. And uh, we recorded it in Munich, a lot of it really, and Freddie helped out a little bit, you know, said, oh, like, you need us something a little bit different there. But it was basically ultra, ultra simple, really. And um, in fact, uh, we used, um, you know, a, a drum loop, uh, you know, for the thing, because it was just so simple, and that's all I wanted all the way through, something just solid, really. And that was a way of doing it, because really. it wasn't the sort of music everybody, you know, we, we played at all, really. And, and I think uh, the band was as surprised as, as I was that it became so successful, I mean, especially in America. With everybody making videos, I mean, you have to try something different. And you know, Freddie had some strong ideas, and uh, in the absence of any other really good ideas, then you, you know, you go with it. Well, because he's, he's very perfectionist and always wants to do, he always wants to do things in a big way. You know, he doesn't want to do anything sort of that would be considered, you know, small time or, you know. So, uh, I mean, whereas to some of us, you know, the ideas seem a bit uh, grandiose or over the top or, you know, you know we, and we sometimes have to argue about these things, really. It does make it more difficult, you know, because we, uh, you know, uh, to have goals set because uh, we've achieved a lot anyway. In terms of traditional sort of 
you know, you know, achievement. We have achieved a tremendous amount. Yes, you do ask how long it's going to go on, really, and we've, I mean, been doing it a long time now. And um, I don't know. I, I really, if I could tell the future, um, uh, life would be quite boring, I think. <laughs> <laughs>